Thank you. At the risk of sounding like I'm parroting Matt, wow, what a day it's been. We have heard from some incredible speakers, some amazing everyday heroes, and I know that from the conversations I've had with you during the breaks and at lunch, I'm hearing how energized everyone is to step up and become an everyday hero, how we're inspired and motivated. But I've also heard that maybe there's a little bit of doubt, that maybe we're concerned we're not going to have the same opportunities of some of the other people we've heard up here, from Anthony to Kenya, or that maybe we don't have the skills required to support someone and to step up and be an everyday hero. After all, not everyone can parkour like Dan, right? My message for you today, though, is that you have an opportunity to make someone's life better every single day. You have an opportunity to save lives far more often than you even recognize, and you already have the skills. So I, as Matt indicated, I have flown here from Geelong, Australia. I'm, it's a privilege to be here to represent Hero Town, Geelong. David Rendell specifically said that I need to get up here and tell you I have flown a G long way to get here. <laughs> But it is a privilege to be here to represent this organization. Our mission is to train everyday heroes. And by that, we're empowering individuals to step up and create positive change for themselves, for their families, their communities, and for the world at large. We do this by bringing together theory, by bridging the gap from theory to practice. So we take the incredible work of the psychologists that we heard earlier and put that into practice. We teach individuals how to develop the skills and the mindsets required to be everyday heroes. We use the Heroic Imagination Project's training, and we also deliver mental health first aid, which you ha if you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend that you check it out. But today we've only got 12 minutes, and I want to give you one small yet profound action that you can take away from this conference and become an everyday hero with the skills you already have. So I'm mindful of the fact that we're meeting today under the shadow of the Golden Gate Bridge. This is an incredible structure, and people come here from all around the world to partake in its beauty. Unfortunately, a number of people also travel here to step off that bridge and end their life. The Golden Gate Bridge is the most used site in North America for suicide. Suicide is a leading cause of death around the world. And in my home country, it is the leading cause of death for anyone under age 45. Around the planet, we lose someone to suicide every 40 seconds, which means that by the time I finish speaking today, we will have lost 18 lives. So to begin to understand how we can overcome this problem, There are two critical features that we can act on. First is that we have a lack of personal resources. And by this, I mean, if someone that you love was thinking about suicide, what would you do? What would you say? It was that moment that started one of the most challenging times for me. I had returned home from work, exhausted. I wanted nothing more than to crawl into bed with a good book and forget about the stress of work. But someone very close to me reached out because they'd been thinking about suicide all day. They wanted my help. They were so afraid of these thoughts and their inability of keeping themselves safe that they'd stayed in bed all day. And I desperately wanted to help them. I desperately wanted to keep them safe and keep them alive. But I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to say or who could help. And so really, it's little wonder that many years later, I have volunteered at our National Crisis Support Hotline, our Suicide Prevention Hotline. And through a variety of roles, I've been able to help hundreds of people in their darkest moments and enact many, many, many safety uh, and suicide interventions. The other concern that we have when it comes to suicide is isolation and loneliness. Loneliness is a leading risk factor for depression and anxiety. It's associated with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and premature death. It's just as bad for us as smoking. And isolation, it's not just about physically being isolated from everyone else. It's about a disconnection. It's about a disparity between 
the quality of relationship that we want with those around us and the reality of that relationship. So although we have amazing people here in the audience, and we've had some fantastic conversations, it's entirely possible some of you feel entirely alone. Would you like some good news? <laughs> the good news is that the answer is hidden there in plain sight. The solution to loneliness, one of the critical tools to suicide, to suicide prevention and to overcoming mental health concerns, is a sense of connection. Connection and community is the only consistent predictor of longevity, of well-being and happiness. And this is our opportunity, as everyday heroes, to step up and provide this sense of connection. One of the most important tools to do that... Uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm not nervous. <laughs> so, Dr. Zimbardo talked earlier about the importance of shifting your perspective from egocentric to sociocentric. And what he means there is shifting your perspective from I to we. When it comes to mental health, this means shifting our focus from mental illness to mental wellness. It's shifting from I at the center of mental illness to we at the center of mental wellness. One of the most important tools to do this is empathy. Empathy is about seeking to acknowledge and recognize and share in someone else's experience in life, their thoughts and their feelings. Empathy is about listening, not giving unsolicited advice. It's about being in the person's shoes that you're speaking with, rather than bringing along your own experiences and so-called expertise. Empathy is that gut feeling that we all felt when Kenya was up here talking. And for some of us, the crocodile tears that we shed. That is empathy. But empathy is really only powerful when we turn it into compassion. When we take those feelings that we, that we experience with someone during their hardest moments and pair it with an action to alleviate their suffering. And that is compassion, empathy in action. Compassion has the power to change the world. And in terms of suicide prevention, it is the tool that saves lives. So how do we engage in compassion when it comes to suicide prevention? First, we have to be able to recognize the signs that someone might be thinking of ending their life. Now, everyone, nearly everyone, who ends their life by suicide will give off warning signs. It may be as apparent as them talking about suicide or death more broadly. However, for some, talking about this is a challenge. Talking about anything is a challenge. And so they may not be openly expressing it. Instead, what we should look for is if they're withdrawing from social connections from their loved ones if they express having no reason for living or no purpose in life. They may express a sense of hopelessness that everything is hard and it's not getting any better, and helplessness that it doesn't matter what they do, it's not going to get better. These are all warning signs and red flags for us. However, we can't actually know if someone is thinking about suicide unless we ask them directly. And this is where we begin to shift our empathy into compassion, because we're putting it into action. By asking directly, it's going to sound something like this. Are you thinking about suicide? We need to ask the question directly to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. By doing this, we're opening the door to having a conversation. We're saying that we're willing to have this conversation with someone, that we've noticed the warning signs that they've been putting out, and most importantly, that we care. Now, I encourage you to use whatever language sits best with you. If you find the word suicide challenging, you can say, are you thinking about ending your life? Or are you thinking about killing yourself? But make sure that we're talking about suicide. Then the most important thing is to stop talking and to listen. In a world of 140 character tweets, 10-second Snapchat videos, Instagram filters, and the hunt for the ever-elusive perfect selfie. To be truly heard and seen for who we are is profound and extraordinarily rare. That's what you need to offer this person, the time and space to be heard and seen. We want to understand the pain that they're going through. Keep in mind that most people who are thinking about suicide don't actually want to die. What they want is an end to their emotional pain and this is the only option that they see. 
So we need to understand that pain if we're going to help. So some tips, first of all, don't do anything that will damage the relationship that you have with this person because these are the critical features that are keeping them alive. And don't use cliche phrases like, I understand, because even if you've experienced the same thing, you're not experiencing it from their perspective and you cannot understand. And don't say something like, cheer up, because never in the history of cheering up has anyone ever cheered up by being told, cheer up. <laughs> However, some tips what you should do. Be patient and calm. Now, I appreciate this will probably be one of the most challenging conversations you'll ever have, and inside you'll be melting down. But do your best to portray calm and confidence. Listen without expressing judgment. Whatever you think this person should be thinking, feeling, or doing is only going to put a barrier between you and them. So put that to the side and hold out hope. Here, I am not saying that we're hoping for a magical fairy who will come along and cure their depression and everything will be better. Realistically, there's a long path in front of this person that will be very challenging. But hold out hope for recovery. Because recovery is not only possible, it's the most common and most likely outcome. And most people who think about suicide don't actually act on their thoughts. One way that I keep this in mind is through this beautiful practice of kintsugi. Kintsugi is a, a Japanese art form from a philosophy that just because something is broken doesn't mean it's not beautiful. So when pottery is broken, rather than discarding it as useless or repairing it in a way that hides the flaws, it's repaired with gold. The gold makes it more, more beautiful, more valued, and not in spite of its flaws and imperfections, but because of them. And sometimes I think we need to apply this to ourselves. After you've sat with someone and begun to understand what it is they're going through, it's important then to focus on safety. Now, for everyone, this is going to look different, but the important factors are that this is their plan to keep themselves safe. We're not taking responsibility off of them. They create a plan to keep safe, and it needs to involve other people because it's not realistic, and it's actually dangerous if you take on the responsibility of being the sole person supporting them. So you can use suicide prevention hotlines, reach out to their doctor, their psychiatrist or psychologist, and if they don't have one, this is a perfect opportunity to get them linked in with a mental health professional. And then practice in some self-compassion. Here, if you're thinking about conversations that you could or should have had in the past, if you're having any thoughts of, I could have or I should have, I encourage you to put them to the side, because you did the very best that you could with the information and skills that you had at the time, and I encourage you to take these skills on board for the future. Finally, when it comes to self-compassion, remember that we have a responsibility to help someone to recognize these signs and to step up and have these conversations. But ultimately, their actions are theirs, and unfortunately, if someone does choose to act on their thoughts of suicide, that is not a failing on your part, okay? And engage in self-care, as Audre Lorde said, Caring for yourself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. So do the little things that replenish you, whether that's cuddling with your uh, pet or going out for a walk or having coffee with a friend. Suicide is largely preventable, and these compassionate conversations are the ways that you can save lives. These conversations will ripple throughout your community. They can and do save lives, and they are deeply heroic. Our world needs more everyday heroes, and our world needs you. Thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.